Can't believe this. This is July, folks. July. And it's raining. Wow. Wow, we, how did this happen? I don't even know. But my block, it's all raining. Look at my car back there. Honda. Yeah, all full of water. Look at that. <laughs> this is crazy. And of course, I love the rain. You know I love the rain. You know I'm sitting here dancing outside in the rain. And uh, I just woke up and I, I was just like, whoa, it's raining. Oh my gosh, this is cool. So, welcome to Season 2, Episode 28, Enough News from the Owl Ranch. And it's raining on this strange July day. And, and it's been heat wave. Like yesterday, my car was baking. It was inferno. I went out to get the pizza. And I thought it was going to melt in there. I'm so glad I'm not a chuckle bunny. So I was a chuckle bunny. If I put it on the ground, it would just go, blah, 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 melt like the blood. You know, but no. I went back in, ate my pizza. And went, oh, it's going to be another miserable hot day today. I wake up and it's raining. It's like, God, answer my prayers. Yay! Well, anyway. Let's go back inside and let's get to the news, shall we? So this week, um, we have a post from um, A.K. Blast and Oz, which, believe it or not, it gives me more questions than it actually answers. <laughs> they made a uh, long strike kit. Um, this was a worker-based long strike kit, and this is what they're selling. Um, nine kilograms. It says it does about 170 feet per second. I'm hearing reports more like 160, but few little problems with it just a few um number one bolt sled it just uses your standard bolt sled are they going to make a better bolt sled are they not going to make a better bolt sled um really you know it's not really all that feasible and i mean i could go nine kilograms with let's say the whiteout version of the AK Blaster Moss Kit 2. Are they going to make a version of the Long Strike Kit where you get the new upgraded catch and the bolt handle and all that? That's true, but it does not have this, does not have this. That way you can just use your normal turns. Because 9K, I mean, shit, I was running 14K in a Retaliator once. <laughs> I mean, really, it's not that big a deal. 18K in this one. Yeah. So really, um, I can see if you're only going 9K, you only need this, but let's, let's face it. We have always looked at the long strike as, you know, this is a blaster that is a moose sniper-esque, and it's always never been. It'd be really nice if they put better internals in there, let's say, and a large plunger tube, what have you. And also the tube that they have, uh, it doesn't really look like an enlarged tube. It, it looks more like a uh, end strike uh, compatible tube that it basically makes a rec tube and goes in, but it goes on the, on the same rails. Yeah, you know, I, I, why, why couldn't they make this a larger tube or make this a larger tube kit? And then they make this whole thing metal. Like, why? Why not just make an injection mold? Why not just make it plastic? Also, the barrel's really short. It only goes to about here. And really, it's not going to give you much more power than a RET. You know, this is going to be an episode where you're going to see a lot of, um, a lot of these conversion kits that are cool because they give people more choices, but then it's like, why make that choice? There's already something better. I should almost call that episode that because that is kind of what it is. I do like this this peg right here that makes it so you can just put in a, a like a like a like a like a stamp heat spring. That's clever. I like um, the fact this is metal. This catch boy. They should do this for ret. They should make a ret plunger like that. Um, because the problem is, is that a lot of times you have the metal one, and then you have the ABS plastic, and it grinds. I tend to, I like the Explorer ones back in the day, because, um, they're made out of urethane, and you can also resharpen them, but, uh, metal's always been a little too heavy for the RET, but, um, nowadays, with the stronger springs and everything, I think you can pull off, um, a metal, you know, pl uh, plunger, um, the plunger head. I think you can do it. So I'm thinking they really should do that, you know? Um, it really should have a long shot diameter tube. Um, it does look really neat, and if you're really into a long strike and you want it to have some decent performance, I guess that's okay, but it's it's not going to be like Big Blue here. It's not. It's not going to be that kind of sniper-esque. Um, I really, um, think that, okay, they do really need to make that kit where it doesn't have this, it doesn't have this, it just has this, 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 and that. 
um, for the whiteout long strike, the model, uh, I'm sorry, not whiteout, excuse me, the modelist long strike. Yeah, um, my friend Corey has one, and it's pretty cool, but it'd be really cool if you can go a little further with that. Also, the barrel ends right here, aerodynamic drag. And although this is a bigger diameter barrel, I have played with one, it still has aerodynamic drag, yeah. I even put I even put this on one of my modded uh, Retaliators 1HVZ, and I noticed that it had a lot of aerodynamic drag. Um, so, uh, it's just a real shame that, I, it's cool that they've done this, but it's a real shame that they don't have the slide and they don't have everything else. And I really hope that they do. Also, trigger, metal trigger. If you're going to go metal everything, why not metal trigger? I mean, go at it, man. Just go to war, go to town, you know? Kind of sad. Also, um, NF Strike has this on their uh, website, not just AK Blaster Moth, um, if you want it. Uh, so if you really are that desperate, go ahead and, ch and check out AK Blaster Moth. It shouldn't be that hard to find. There you go. Okay, so we've gone through a couple mods that don't really make a lot of sense. Okay, um, let's go to a mod that really does make sense, and I'm really glad they have it. So AK Blaster Mods again. This time they have sleeves that fit around 73 seconds and 916 breasts. This is a really good idea because a lot of these scars are 5.8 scars. And you usually have to do something like, here is the Chrono Mag that I used um, during, um, during Armageddon, you know, 300 feet per second. I actually got spot banned because it was so fast. <laughs> 300 feet per second and rifling. But this is an Arcurito, um, a, a Lego DEI Arcurito, um rifling it, one of the first ones they have, okay, and basically because it was 5 eighths, I had to do that. I basically had to laminate this with glue, and I had to center it and everything, and yeah, it was an all-night job to do. I mean, it's nice. I mean, it, got, it, it shoots well. It was worth the effort, but it would be really nice if you, I always thought it would be really nice to cast spacers, and I think it's really cool. The downside, well, it's not brass. Brass tends to like the link to brass it gives you that kind of metal to metal kind of contact seal to it you know but again it is also easier to glue though because it's abs you can just glue it to here glue it to here glue it to that and yeah you're done you know by the way i just want to shoot this thing why not you know i just got some new darts that i just made out of the cartea factory one finger there we go two fingers it is an 185K Chrono Mag. Yeah. But, uh, oh yeah. It's always fun having like a super powerful Chrono Mag. A Prophecy Killer. Oh man, you can hear that pop, man. You can hear that pop. Okay, so those are silicone darts. So this is a silicone dart. Silicone dart. You guys see that, right? Silicone darts usually bounce off of things. They're not really good for. Um, for cardboard busters, that is in, unless you're doing like past about, oh, I'd say 280 feet per second. So, is this going to be too much fun for cardboard box? Let's see. <laughs> sure as shit is. Look at that. Right through the packing box. Right through it. Oh, yes. If you go fast enough, even bouncy silicone will go right through a cardboard box. No problem. Oh, yeah. So, um, at any rate, it's this is a really good means of being able to put any scar on brass without any problems and no centering problems See, a lot of people they try to put on brass they'll put tape on there and the tape will be uneven and the scar will move this way or that way and yeah this is a much better way of doing it and i think it's it's really an ingenuitive idea i think it's a really good idea so now let's go to some more mods this one actually makes a lot of sense let's go do some this week that i saw that although they're really cool products and I'm sure everybody's gonna want them, they're not really all that great of ideas. This week from AliExpress, we had this. This is a basically a chronomag kit for Jupiter. They also make one for the Mercury. That one actually makes a lot of sense. Um, still, it's kind of like the star kit where you have the mag adapter and there's no real way to fasten it. Uh, unlike a Venom kit, or a Nerf Easy E kit, which is just an incredibly phenomenal kit. If you don't have one already, you should get one. But of course, it's feeding that demand of, oh, it's a brand new thing, it's the Jupiter, yay. Yeah. 
Interesting enough, this was fifty four ninety nine. Now it, it is cheaper. It is thirty seven ninety nine. So they had they had cut down this price since I last saw it. And I posted it on Nerf News Meow Ranch, but I can't seem to get any more pictures of it. I'm wondering why I can't get any more pictures of it because I was going to show you that this here would be here and your magazine would be way up there. And they have a cover picture without the magazine, just the magwell in there and everything. And it shows you that it's way up here. Now imagine, okay, you got a blaster, and people already complain about this distance, okay? That the mag release is way up here. If you have the mag release back here, of course, I do it the smart way. It's a two-handed blaster. Yeah, I just put the mag release on the front. I know I'm going to hold it with two hands. Why the heck bother, right? But on this thing, um, you, you think this is bad. Try going from, like, way over here to way over here with your mag release, right? or pulling your mag way up here. So imagine your mag's here. Well, now your mag is way up here, okay? And you gotta pull it. Not only that, it's gonna look like something that the Iraqi army shooting or something. It's gonna look like some kind of improvised blaster, some kind of improvised weapon, you know? And if you really like the form factor of the stock and this and that, and you don't mind this being way up here, um, you know, that's great and wonderful. And of course, once again, they're going retaliator speed on this. Small. Uh, small barrel, short barrel, probably about six inches on the barrel, where you're talking about 64 cc's of air. You can easily do 10 or 11 inches of barrel on one of these, and like this is right here, you know. This is an 18.5K chronomag, and it's it's shooting great guns. Ooh, telescopic sights. You always get uh, use those telescopic sights. I'm going to shoot Mr. Designated Marksman in the shoulder. Yeah. It also makes it so this is way recessed in here. Uh, putting a scar in it's going to be a little harder to do. It's not going to look that good. And, yeah, and, and you can call me biased or whatever, but I'm going by my knowledge here. A Chronomag mod, which essentially this is what this is. It's just the Chronomag mod put on Jupiter. Okay. Um, is a nice mod because your base blaster is less than $20. As a matter of fact, you can probably get one for like 15 bucks, 16 bucks, no problem. Some people have gotten these for 10 bucks. okay. It has a nice grip, it has a nice form factor. Even Ben Russell, he put this 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 nice, nice dual tube um, stock on there and everything. And it's a, you can make one of these for less than $100. If you have like Nerf Easy Ease kit, you know, the kit's like, what, 60 bucks plus maybe I think 20 to ship it, 20, 24 to ship it, something like that. And you can get the Monkey Mons Barrel for another 10, 13 bucks, something like that. And you can get the spring for another, I think, $15. Pretty much under $100, you got yourself a Chrono Mag. You got yourself a nice Chrono Mag. Um, why get something that's going to double the price of your blaster and not be that good? And really, I mean, I think that the Rival Jupiter is probably a really good Jupiter. I would venture that I can fit like maybe an 18 um, worker in here or an 18 Explorer cut down. And I can get the kind of losses I get out of my, um, out of my red, um, cr on my red chronosis, which is about 150 to 170 feet per second. Now at that speed, that would be really cool to make a sniper and put a little scope on there and everything, yeah. But I don't really see this as a, as a formidable competitor to the chrono mag. And sure you can make one as fast and everything, but you got all this useless bulk and everything when you can have just this really, really nice, here, let me lose the mag in here. Really, really nice, just you know, blaster. You know, I mean, I already got the power and the speed and everything I want to. It's just that fad of a brand new thing. And again, this is why I say this week is that week for the mods that are well, you can do them, but they're not good ideas. In my opinion, go with the Nerf Easy E Chrono Mag, it's a nicer blaster. It, it, it holds up well, it fires well, it works with standard barrels, you know. And I would also hold off, if you do want to mod a Jupiter, to those kind of specs. I would hold off and wait to see what other people make for the Jupiter. If they if it's really cool or not, or something really good, something like this maybe. You know, because I think that this, this, is, just, this is just a spot on kit, you know. Let's see if they go through trouble for the Jupiter, or for whatever. But this engine is getting more common, and I would get used to modding the Kronos engines, because you're going to see that in a lot of blasters in the future. So, um, LEGO DI came up with the Acrodome Nerf Rifling Attachment Mark III, 
This one is really nice because it has um, custom lengths and custom diameters. So you can have 5 8 inch, 16 millimeter, or 73 seconds. This is nice because if you remember, I custom made this to be 73 seconds. Now he has one where it's just right off the bat. It's just made off the 3D printer in 73 seconds. He also makes these from PETG so they don't melt. This actually held up really well at Armageddon. And I had some very good accuracy. And I was very much in love with it. And I still am. That's why I keep shooting it. Ooh, I love that. I love that. Can't beat the good old Kronos. I, I'm sorry, you really can't. I mean, maybe the Mercury would be cool because it has those two over handles that makes it so you can side prime, but I like the Chrono Mag. It's just our friend. But you can you can go with um, custom diameter and you can come with custom length. You want six inches? Uh, you want 1.6 inches? I'm oh, sorry, you want six inches? You want 4.8 inches? You want three and a half inches? Dude. They make all sorts. They make the version one, the version two, and the version three. You can have all the whatever lengths you want. You can have what, whatever diameter you want. You can have whatever quantity you want. This is really, I mean, just kick ass rifling in it. Um, Bradley Phillips um, um, reviewed one of these, and he said it's like the most accurate one he's seen. Well, he hasn't gotten my my Merlin yet, but he will. So we'll see about that. But this, even I mean, I even use one of these. They're great. They're awesome. I, I really love these. You might have a little bit of fuzz when you get them, but all you have to do is pretty much run a dart through there, and it's no big deal. And I use a little bit of wax. So the same waxing I do on the barrel, I do on this, and that's how I get my high speed. It also it also helps. Um, yeah, it also helps with the speed of it and everything. So it is the most accurate and affordable um, rifling unit on the market. And I think that this is a really great... Great departure from the SCAR, and I'm, I'm glad there is one that's common. Because unlike a SCAR which has strings that go this way, this way, this way, this way, this one actually is a pattern that follows a curvature. Just like a Bond, James Bond film, yes. Uh, you can see the rifling right here. And look at that, yeah. So I think it's really cool. I, I didn't have much luck with them with the long shots high and, and the Bird of Prey, but that's because those are really powerful high impact kind of designs which actually do better with a Merlin. But when it comes to most of your blasters, a uh, Ret, a uh, Kronos, um, uh, what have you, I really think that this is a good design. And, you know, for the price that he's selling them, you can't go wrong. This is really, really cool. He also has that um, chronograph that came out. My friend Tripp Miller, he got uh, one and he put it up on Death by Nerf Blaster. And he says it's really cool. I mean, it has a shot count, it has rate per, uh, rate of fire count. Um, it works in the dark. I mean, hell, this is really, really kick butt, you know? Yeah, and he also gives you free shipping to U.S. with $35 purchase. So you can get a whole bunch of these and get that chronograph from them. Yeah, that's what I would do. That sounds like a freaking plan. And you get all sorts of goodies from one of the, one of the smartest people I've met in Nerf, other than Brad, uh, Brad Mathis, who is, of course, RoboMan. They're also, he's also a really smart machinist kind of guy, and yeah. So we have some real talent in this, in this community. We do. So let me show you another really smart idea for modding. This is from AK Blaster Mods, and this is the brass kit for your, um, for your retaliator. And I think they make one for a long shot, too. I'm not sure. But nonetheless, yeah. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Uh, 2750, uh, um, 54 gives you this for the retaliator and it is a, it is a kick ass unit, man. It is a kick ass unit. It, uh, variable lengths. You want five inches for your normal PT. They'll give it to you. You want 10 inches, only a couple dollars more. Yeah. So 29, 27 for the 10 incher for the expanded tube one. There's a few other, there's a few hiccups. I like the fact that it has these holes there so you can glue it. That's really cool. But one... I would integrate this into like a normal retaliator bolt. In other words, I would take a normal retaliator bolt, drill it out so it can fit this and do this. Why? Because um, 3D printed plastic doesn't hold up as well as, as, as injection mold. Injection mold has a little more resistance towards snapping and cracking. So I would consider putting this in something like this. And maybe it'll work with theirs and maybe it won't. I'm not sure. But it's worth considering for sure. Um, number two, um, with, when you put it into 
your uh, dark gate, you really have to be careful how you do it. And you have to be careful what you do. You can hold it to this thing and do that, sure. Um, I would probably do a little different method where I tape it and then I epoxy the front of it. That's the way I would do it. So there's lots of ways once you get the brass artist. But let's face it, $30 for a brass and PLA kit that you can just put into a blaster. You can just, boom, throw it in a blaster. And you don't have to, like, do all this cutting and all this hard work. Because this is a lot of cutting and a lot of hard work. It is. I mean, I, I have to... I have to be honest. And so this is a really, really good idea to throw in here. Um, I just I hope they have a long shot one. Wouldn't it be cool if they had a long shot one? I don't see a long shot one anywhere. If they do, let me know. I'm, I'm not a person who really shops for this kind of stuff. I normally make my own. I do things by my own spec. That's kind of how I do things. So if they do, uh, send me a message. Tell me about it. Um, because it would be really cool if they had one for a long shot. That would be pretty badass. But so far, all I see is the Retaliator one. And if they do have it for the Retaliator 2, they should just say Length, Model, Retaliator, Long Shot. That's the way you should do it. So, we spotted, we're starting to spot the Revoltinator at Target. Um, why is this a cool thing? Because, well, it is really bright and lightened up. And I honestly think that if you're going to spend a bunch of money on a blaster, you are actually better with something like this than, let's say, a Fortnite Scar. Funny, I actually found <laughs> an ad for eight Fortnite scars for sale, for like six hundred dollars or something. Yeah, it was pretty insane. But it's out. It's semi-auto. Um, it's pretty cool. But again, it's one of those gimmicky blasters. You know, once you have a strife, you pretty much have the motorized system, everything else. You know. Um, I personally like the detail on it, and I think it's cool. And I guess it's all right, but yeah, it's just another strife with a lot of lights on it. What's really cool is um, this week I went on uh, my um, I went on a safari to Woodland Hills, and I found I found these blasters. Check it out. And we got the bag strike. Yay, the bag strike for forty bucks, and we have the stabby for seventy dollars. We've got the Fortnite Happy Happy Micro. Um, well, this. Well, no, I think it is a Happy Happy Blaster for 15. Oh, Microsoft are, are 10. Oh, Microsoft are 10. We have the Happy Happy SP for 20. We have the Shotgun for 40. We've got the Megalodon for 40. Man, yeah, you know, I got a shotgun and stuff here. Yeah, man, the Mag Strike and the Stampy, they're sitting right there. But expensive, though. You know, $45 for something I got from a thrift store a couple years ago for 50 cents. Yeah, I got a mag for 50 cents. That's no shit. And they want $45 for it and a stampy for 70 Man. It's just so much money, you know. And I'm wondering what else is going to be in the Icon series. What else is going to be cool in it? Um, we got the mag strike and we got the um, and we got the stampede. What else is going to be in there? What do you think? Uh, leave me a comment and tell me what you think. But, uh, yeah, there's some really cool blasters coming up. And I went to this other store. And another issue I wanted to talk about was... I went to this uh, Target in Woodland Hills, and they had all these blasters that I can't find in Santa Clarita or anywhere else. And I don't know if they're releasing it in Woodland Hills first, but it kind of makes me sad that the, the distribution of blasters isn't as fair. And I mean that word, fair, um, as you would think it would be. And that's really sad because, you know, I go to, like, up here, and who wants to drive, like, 50 miles to go to a place to see if they have new blasters. They had everything. They had the Megalodon. They had the, um, they had the, the Icon Series blasters. They had the first Alpha Series blaster. Yeah, they had all these blasters. And I just thought it was just totally unfair that they had them and we didn't. So this week I was looking through channels and I was browsing across uh, channels. I found this this post by American Foam. It's called the American Foam Minute. And it was the first episode he did, and he did it on the Alpha Strike Fang QS4. And what I loved about this was the art of brevity. Check this out, man. Check this out. In a minute 38, he takes 22 minutes of footage, and he puts it all in one very basic, easy to understand um, package. And I loved it. I loved it for that reason.
This week on your American phone. Look at this. Paper, this is so the cool, guys. Fang QS4. Now, the Fang QS4 is one of the first entrants in the new Alpha Strike line. Now, this line is priced for those nerfers who are on a budget. If you're looking to dip your toe into the nerf world for the first time, this is the line for you. It's going to give you the same well as it is regular nerf brand well products, rehearsed, but at a price to the point. The bank. How so fast is it? Let's go describes ahead and take the blaster. And see everything. It all. Now, you'll notice that it holds in less than two minutes. Smart AR barrels up in the front here. And that means you beautiful. can go ahead and pull the trigger back beautiful. here. I don't want to give this video away too much, but I really like this because he's the exact opposite of me. Brief. I'm not brief. I like to explain things. I like to tell people stuff. I like to have a relationship with the community and everything else. But this is a relationship, too. This is a relationship of tell us what we need to know when we want to know it. Boom. And I can respect that because he's everything I'm not. And he's just great at it. He's just great at it. Just brief. Good editing, good video, shows us the accuracy from 25 feet, shows us the range from 75 feet. I mean, just lays it all out there. And just boom. Oh, minute, minute 49 seconds, yeah. But, um, you know, it is an art. It is an art of Brefferty, and I am, well, not good at it. But uh, he shows us the blasters. He shows us more. And then from here, okay, here's my suggestion, American Film. Here's my suggestion. From here, I would do videos such as a, after this, I would do like a takedown video. I would use this as an introduction. Then have a takedown video. Then have like a review against other, comparison against other blasters. And then maybe a mod video. I mean, from this video, you can make like three or four videos after that which would be really cool. So I don't think you're losing anything by making a American Film Minute on new blasters and new products. I think it's actually a good idea to get people in the door because it makes people hungry. Not only does it answer the questions, but it makes people hungry for more, for more from you. And you can do more in-depth stuff and more stuff with this. So this is, I, I think that this can be a really good series and that you should really make a playlist and you should do one of these a week. I really thought that this was great. This was a really cool series, and when I, I asked you about it, you said, okay, this is my, one of my first one. I was like, oh, man, you got to keep doing this. This is like Owl Ranch, where Owl Ranch is the opposite. I explain everything to death. You just, boom, there it is. We need that other side of the news as well, not just the side that likes to talk and editorialize, but the side that gives you the 411, boom, boom, boom. So it gets people informed, gets people to know what's going on. I really think that this is important, and I think this is a really great video. So, a little ray of hope this week for Toys R Us. May it come back? It might. It looks like they were acquired by a firm called uh, B8TA, um, and he is a co-founder and CEO, Vinnery Norby, um, has brought it back. And uh, this is the first two to uh, Toys R Us stores that will open up the holiday season. One in, Gal in the gallery in Houston, Texas, uh, which is a Simon Mall, and a Westfield Mall um, in Palmyra, New Jersey, called Westfield Garden State Plaza. As we all know, malls have gone downhill, and um, for one thing, I don't. That, one reason I don't think that that's a, a really good idea. They really should go for more retail space than a mall. And what do I mean by retail space? I mean like where you would find an old Toys R Us, where you're usually not in a mall but outside, but because the malls have been dying. Um, the other thing is this company doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really say much to me. I have talked to retail people before, and it just, I read this article, it just doesn't give me that buzz. And it's really cool that there are two stores, but this is two stores. This is, it used to be an empire, and there's two stores starting out. And it looks like right now it's just going to be like kind of a pop-up store for the, uh, for the holiday season. But I'm hoping, hoping very much, that it's going to be more than that. And if they do some creative measures and they don't get overloaded with debt like Toys R Us did, buying out all the stores and putting under a huge loan so that they own the whole company and all the stores, uh, that it will be really cool. Because let's face it, it is a competitive market out there. It's really tough. I think it's cool to have those two stores by, uh, back, but one, they're completely east side of the country where I'm never going to see them, so uh, that's kind of a drag. The other thing is, well, it's two stores, you know? Is, is it almost not the store and just the name? That's what it feels like to me. I don't know. I could be wrong. It could be hopeful. I'm going to do some more research on B8TA and see what their track record gear it is and see what, what what's happening with that. It was a little too late for me to actually find anything on them, but I'm going to look into it and tell you what I think. You guys, leave me some comments down below and tell me what do you think. I mean, this is a, our new two-store launch at Toys R Us this Christmas. Is it going to be cool? Is it going to not be? Who knows? 
And until next time, this is Chris Cartea saying don't you go changing or I'll find you. This has been Season 2, Episode 28 of Nerf News of the Owl Ranch. And I'm really happy to give you all this news. And I'm really happy to be a part of this community and help bring forth the truth and the knowledge to the, to the Nerf community of what's really going on and what have you. So until next time, don't you go changing or I'll find you. <laughs> rather die a horrible green fever death or get a nice clean pipe to the temple.